My name is Chris Bowie. I teach uh, fifth grade at Brookside Charter School. I am from KCTR Cohort 5. This is my first year as a teacher of record. I was a resident teacher of the year. I thought that was cool, so I'll say that. Tell me a little bit about how you ended up at KCTR and what your pathway was to get uh, into education. Yeah. So I graduated with a degree in sports management during the COVID pandemic beginning when we didn't really know what this was. I graduated from school in Texas, but I was looking at for a way to get back home. Uh, my dad used to be a teacher, my sister's a teacher, my aunt's a teacher, my cousins are teachers. So I kind of always knew I was going to be a teacher at some point. I was just kind of fighting it for as long as I could. But then with the pandemic, I don't think I had the urge to fight anymore, so I found KCTR. I love that. What's it look like for you in your classroom to be a highly effective teacher. Now you have a lot of other examples in your family mm -hmm. and then you've also learned from KCCR, but how do you define that for yourself? I think for me being highly effective in my teaching is first starting by having a relationship with my students, understanding them, understanding where they come from, understanding who they are as people and not just students. And I think I have a unique perspective on that as somebody who was probably once in their shoes but also a perspective that's a little bit challenging because um, most people haven't had a black male teacher in fifth grade so coming into the situation it's a little bit different for me than probably a lot of other teachers in positive and negative ways but just really tapping into that relationship building and ensuring that my pedagogy is cater to my students in a way that's going to nurture their whole being. Can you share a little bit more about how being a black male impacts how you show up in the classroom and how you that impacts your relationship with your mm -hmm. students? Uh, as a black male, I have to kind of tread a little bit lighter maybe than other teachers because some of my students, they may have negative experiences with black men particularly or just in general are a little sketchy because they know black women, they know women in general, they've been taught by women their whole lives. So as a black male, just showing up and like trying to lay the hammer down is something that I learned right away is gonna to lead to a lot of negative things in the classroom. So just trying to balance like being somebody who they see and who they can recognize, but then also understanding the intricacies of their previous relationships with people who look like me and kind of navigating that as we go. Mm, yeah. Could you share a little bit um, about, you know, someone that's watching this video or reads this is a black male and is considering being a teacher. Can you talk a little bit more mm -hmm. about like, the importance there? Uh, I would speak from the black male perspective. It's, I mean, if you look at any statistic, I think there's something like only 2% of teachers in America are black men. But when black men are teaching in urban environments or lower income environments, they have a major impact. So it's something like having one black male teacher before fifth grade or, you know, in elementary school, like decreases dropout rates for young black and brown kids by like 35 percent. So it's a it's a high impact career field as a black male or as a person, but particularly as a black male from what I can speak from. And I think it is something that is super rewarding if you wanna make an impact, if you wanna impact future generations, right? I have 20 students, but those 20 students, if they each only have one kid, you could be affecting the lives of, you know what I mean, 40 people. And then generationally speaking, you can go even deeper than that. So just the ability to have an impact, the ability to make a difference, and more so the ability to just show up and represent something that is not represented very often in this industry so everybody knows lebron james or whatever the hottest rapper is but the chances of a kid being that are slim to none but you could be a teacher you could be a professional so just to be able to have that impact and be able to show a different career path a different side of life and really just be able to connect to them in a different way you know what i mean the stuff that i can connect to students with most people cannot connect to their students with so it, it's a opportunity to really make a big difference. How do you foster inclusivity in your classroom amongst your students? 
At my classroom, we typically have a lot of like morning meetings or like restorative type circles where we really just have a conversation about anything anybody is feeling. So if anybody feels like something happened that they didn't like or that they felt was a wrong to them, we just talk about it. So we try to make sure that in our classroom, it's a community. Everybody is comfortable. Everybody has the same opportunities to do or achieve whatever they want to achieve. But the big thing in my classroom is everybody understands that, you know, you have the ability to be and do whatever you want to do. And that includes your attitude, how you treat other people, how you make people feel and the opportunities that you are presented with. So we make sure that we always understand that nobody is better than anybody else. Nobody is less than anybody else. And everybody has a place in a community. In a community, everybody plays a part and everybody has a role to play to make that community strive. So that's kind of the standard we have in my classroom. What does work-life balance look like for you? Or how do you prioritize taking care of yourself? I think work-life balance is very important, as we all know. Um, it's not necessarily always the most easy thing as a teacher. I mean, you have tons of time that you need to do stuff outside of work. But for me, the biggest thing is when I'm gone, I'm gone. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't do work outside of work. I came to work my certain time frame and I worked that time frame. Now don't get me wrong, there's times when you have to lesson plan or I had a parent call me at 6.45 last night and you do have to kind of handle those situations. But I hear a lot of teachers talk about how they're working all day and all night and on the weekends and I just don't do that because that would not be the most healthy thing. So I have five of my own kids and a wife, plus the 20 students I have in here, plus the 50 students on the basketball team. So when I'm gone from the building, I'm gone. So when I get home, I get my hour to myself. On the weekends, we make sure we have a lot of fun and don't think about professional things or work things. So that's kind of my thing, is just to leave work at work. And I know that can be kind of difficult it sounds kind of probably strange to some people, but I think it's very important to understand that you can't take care of your professional life if you don't take care of your personal life. How do you define success then for yourself knowing it's always something you could be doing? Okay? Yeah, I think a lot of people, when they think of success, they think of the world or they think of their peers. But for me, success is just being my best self. So I don't think I'm in competition with anybody else. I'm just in competition with myself. So as long as I can be 1% better than I was the previous day, then that's good enough for me. I feel like I have uh, the ability to be whoever I wanna be and achieve whatever I wanna achieve. But that allows me to not compete with anybody or not try to impress anybody.